Hello students, Ms. Deanson here. Um, I'm going to record a lot of my lectures. The point of this is so you can get some content for homework and we'll have more class time to work on labs and projects and other things. We just have so much to learn this year, there's not time to do it all during class. It makes me nervous to talk to my computer, um, so hopefully you guys will bear with me as we go through this. So this first lecture is about data analysis and presentation. Um, the first set, set of assessment criteria that you'll be looking at has to do with statistics. Um, there's six different specific criteria that you need to know under, and understand. Um, notice that we have state, calculate, state, explain, deduce, and explain as our different command terms. So those should give you a hint about the depth that you need to know the different things at. Okay, so to start off with, I just want to talk a little bit about data. Um, so once we have some numbers, working with them is really all about communication. And it's sort of strange to think about it, but looking at, at numbers and what we do with those numbers is a way to talk about the world around us, a way to look at the natural phenomenon that we have. So we collect all this data to investigate natural phenomenon, to observe patterns, and then to answer some questions. Um, statistics is going to allow us to be able to use this data effectively to answer some of these questions. So as we go through this, um, I'm going to use a data set as an example. I'm also going to show you how to do a lot of this on Excel. Um, I do expect that you learn to use Excel at least enough to do these basic, basic statistics. All right, so let me show you this random data set that I have. Um, so what this data set is, is there's just a random ID number for some students, um, their gender, their major, age, score that they got, height, newspaper readership. So this is actually just a set of data that I collected once in college and just happened to still have. Um, so we've got, I don't know what, 30, 30 students in this class and a little bit of information about all of them. Um, with this information, we can ask some questions. And then we can use statistics and use these numbers to try to answer those questions that we've asked. So I'd like to start by asking the question, are males or females taller in this class? Because I can see I've got a bunch of females, I've got a bunch of males. So what I want to do first is I want to use Excel to help me to put all the females together and put all the males together. That'll just make it really easy for me. So what I'm going to do is go up to sort and filter. I'll click there. There's a custom sort that I can do. Yeah. Click. Custom sort. Thank you. So I would like to sort by gender. Okay. All right, so notice it put all my females together. Notice it put all my males together. I want to add a couple spaces in between each one just so I have some room um, to do some stuff with. To add spaces, I just get this little arrow key over here, and I can say insert, and I don't know, let's insert a couple. Okay, some of these, we've got plenty of space, insert. Let's just insert that many again. Insert, okay. So I've got a bunch of space under my females. I'm going to do the same thing. I want to insert that same amount of space under my males, just so I've got enough space to do things with. All right, now I'm ready to start looking what this data might mean. Okay, so before I can do anything else, I have to describe my data. I have to figure out some of the general things that it is doing. There's a bunch of different ways I can describe but there's two big questions that are going to drive most of my description. First, what is the central or typical value? And then second, what is the spread around that value? Um, so this picture down here, this is what we call a standard distribution. Um, there is this assumption that most things are gonna follow this standard distribution. So if we're looking at height in a population, we're gonna say that most are gonna be sort of in the middle there's some super, super tall people. There's some super, super short people. If we're looking at age in a population, we can assume most are in the middle. There's some really, really old people. There's some really, really young people. We assume this um, standard devi deviation in a lot of different instances. 
Okay, so first thing I want to do with my data is I want to figure out my central or typical values because that's going to tell me where most of my data is. So one of the first things I can do is find the mean. We're going to use this a ton. It's the average value. We use it for a lot, almost all um, sorts of data that we'll look at. So we find that, guys, just add up all the data, divide by the number of data points, and we can use Excel to help us do that. So let's head back to Excel. Okay, so in this case, I wanted to look at, what did I want to look at? I wanted to look at height. So I've got all of these different height numbers, and I want to find the average of those. Down here in the space, I'm going to write the word average, just so I keep track of what my data is. Then I'm going to use Excel to find it for me. So up here at the top, there's this little formula box. I like to click on the FX part, and it'll help me find what I mean. I can type in average. It'll give me this average function. I can click OK. I can highlight the data. I can hit OK, and it'll find the average for me. Um, I can also do that same thing just by typing in here the equal sign, the word average, and then highlighting. I always seem to mess up if I do that, though, so I always use the FX just the way that I do it. Okay, so there's my average there. Let's do the same thing with my males. Find the average here. I'm just going to click this. I want the average. I want the average of these numbers. Thank you very much, Excel, and here's my average. Already, I can see we've got 63.4 as my average height for females, we've got 69.5-ish as my average height for males. So from this central value, I can start to say, oh, males are taller. But we have to do a lot more to figure out if they're taller enough to matter. Okay. Um, I was going to put those results in here, but I'm going to skip that. Maybe you want to do that in your notes. Okay, to also describe that central or typical value, we can look at the median. Um, we're going to use this a lot less often. However, median can be really helpful for us if our population doesn't follow that same like bell curve shape. And so median does become important sometimes. I can also use Excel to help me find that. It's just the midpoint of the data. If we're doing it without Excel, arrange stuff smallest to largest, find the middle piece. If there's two numbers, you average it. But there's a lovely median function on Excel. So let's do that. Label what I'm doing. I'm going to search here for median. It'll bring it up for me. Here's my median function. Then I'm going to highlight what I want it to find medium of. Make sure you don't highlight the average that you already found because that isn't part of your data set and it'll find the median for me. In this case, notice how close my average and my median are. Let's do the same for our males. Here we go. Equals median. Let's highlight these here. Males. Median is 71, so it looks like our median is a little higher than our average in this case, but still pretty close. All right, so 63 and 71 as a result for this data set. Okay, then we need to talk about how spread out our data is. So looking at that bell curve idea, if everything is really close to the middle versus everything is really, really spread out, that tells me some different things about my data. Range is one way to talk about the spread of the data. We don't use it very often because it doesn't take a lot of things into account, but we do use it sometimes. All it is is subtracting the smallest from the largest. It gives us the total spread of our data, and we can do that as well using Excel. There's probably an easier way than this, but I've never figured it out. So I always just take the highest number and subtract that. So I'm going to look for the maximum I'm going to say maximum of all these numbers, and then it'll just find it for me. So in case I notice the wrong one, go back up here. I'm going to say that max minus, and then I'm going to put in the minimum of all these numbers again. And that'll find that for me. So the range in this case is, is 9. Let me see if I can copy that formatting down. I don't know if I can. Yeah, it looks like I can. 
So sometimes when you try to copy a, a box, like I tried right there, um, Excel can figure out what you mean. So Excel is able to say, oh, now you mean this data set. If ever you cop copy something, get like exclamation points or something, just try putting the formatting in again. Okay, so I found my range. Again, we don't use range a ton though. Instead, we are going to use standard deviation. Um, so standard deviation is a really powerful tool because it tells us um, how spread out the data is and also how far a lot of the data is from the mean. We're going to use this all the time. Average and standard deviation are going to be pretty much the stats that we do on, on everything. Um, there's this formula to find standard deviation. Um, when I look at this formula, SX in this case is the standard deviation. This lovely guy here, that is the sum of x, those are the individual values, n is the number of values. So what I notice about this formula when I look at it is where the parentheses are really, really matters. So in this example, we add up x, then square it. In this example, we add up the square of x. And the difference between those two things based on the parentheses is the basis for standard deviation. Here's a couple examples of what standard deviation means. So let's say we've got this bell curve in our population. That bell curve can be really small, the bell curve can be really big, and standard deviation tells us how big the bell curve is. If it's this really thin bell curve, it means that everything is really close to the average. If it's this fatty bell curve, it means things are more far from the average. Um, by statistics, we say about 68% of values are within one standard deviation. So if we can figure out how big that standard deviation space is, it tells us where most of our data is, and allows us to come to some, some conclusions about a whole population based on a really, really small piece of information. So let's do standard deviation using Excel. Um, just the good old standard deviation command is going to be what we use. So I'll go up here to my function box. I like to search. So it's got a bunch of different options for different types of standard deviation. Um, I just like to use STDEV. That's just straight up regular um, standard deviation. It's compatible with all versions of Excel, so I'm happy with that function. I just highlight my data, hit OK and it's going to find standard deviation for me. Okay, so let's think about what the standard deviation means. It means my average is 63.4. 68% of my data is within the range of 63.4 plus 3.1 to 63.4 minus 3.1. That's where 68% um, of this data is. Let's find that for my males as well. Go up here, get my standard deviation function, highlight my data, and I get 3.9. So 69.5 plus 3.9 to 69.5 minus 3.9 is where 68% of my data is for my males. Okay, once I have that information, then I can try to represent it visually by making a graph. That's going to be our next lecture, looking at how we make graphs in Excel and how we can show these different types of statistics visually so we can communicate better. Let me know what questions you have. Make sure you're taking really great notes on all of this stuff, and I'll see you later.